Hey everybody, Christina here with One Creative Direction. How's everybody doing? Um, so today is going to be the first day uh, filming a video and on the new series that I'm starting on uh, paint mixing, uh, recipes, um, etc. So we're going to get started with that. I already got started with my flow trawl, um, but uh, welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you're returning. Uh, subscriber or non-subscriber um, either way you might want to hit that subscribe button I got some good recipe stuff coming your way in the next month or so um, so that's my goal is to try to get uh, quite a few different pour type uh, recipes out there um, some of the different pour types have multiple uh, recipes I have multiple uh, cell activator recipes for like doing blooms and swipes so yeah, if you're not already subscribed, you might want to hit that uh, subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss a video. So with that said, we'll get started. And uh, part of the recipe series, um, at the end, I'm going to offer um, all of my subscribers or anybody watching uh, the chance to get the um, recipe cards that I'm going to be making. So this is how I operate is... Since the beginning of my pour painting, I have a, what I call my mixing Bible, which I can't remember where I put it. Um, oh, it's behind the camera. Um, that I'd started writing notes when I would, you know, watch different artists or figure something out. Like I do a lot of testing. Um, I've done that from the very beginning. Um, so I have like all my like test results and stuff in my, in my recipe Bible. Um, and from there, to make it easier while I'm mixing, I just made up these, these simple recipe cards uh, to help me out. Um, they're easy. So my plan is to produce sets of these and laminate them so we don't ruin them with our different ingredients because we all know how messy this gets. So with that being said, we're going to start. And the first, um, the first recipe I want to share with you is something I've mentioned in a few other videos. Uh, it's a base paint that I created the recipe for um, when I was doing that custom guitar and I, I think I you know described all of my reasons for wanting to do this recipe and that um, the the base paints when you typically do like a bloom swipe uh, you know you, you typically use house paint um, and all of the black house paint uh, brands that I've tried are super thick and they dry somewhat dull. Um, so I was very concerned um, with painting a custom guitar. I wanted the paint to be much thinner. Um, obviously drying faster was a, was a big plus. Um, and then I wanted, you know, a smooth, thin coat, but I also wanted some, a little bit glossy, you know, nice, deep black. Um, and it just, no matter which house paint brands I tried, just wasn't getting that. Um, they all tend to dry like a like a dark slate gray black color, not really a true true black in my opinion. So um, so yeah, that's why I created this recipe. But I found that not only does it work for you know that application and that guitar, I did some some trials on you know various art projects. I've done a few um, art pieces that have sold. I just recently did some more coasters because that was one of my initial tests was a coaster. Um, and the advantage of this recipe for everybody, um, just to kind of encourage you to maybe want to try it. And if you do try this recipe and you really like it, please put that in the comment box. I would really appreciate it um, and share share the video. So it's obviously the, the biggest compliment. So um, a couple of things. Um, not only does it dry really fast, uh, and these are kind of a bad example because you can't really see much of the black because I used a white metallic pearl um, with the gold, and then I think the obsidian, DecoArt obsidian black. So, but what it does is it dries super smooth. Um, what, if you see any kind of texture in this, it's, it's really the wood, but it dries like super smooth. You don't get like with a bloom swipe or a bloom blowout, you don't get that texture, that rough feeling. Not that that's a bad thing, but I find that when you're doing the top coat, it's a lot easier to top coat with a smooth finish than it is with um, something that's got some texture to it. So with these, not only do they dry super smooth, very fast, no cracking, um, and I feel like it's a lot cheaper 
and you don't have to rely on, you know, the house paints being on the shelf, which I've run into that issue before as well. Um, so it kind of solves a lot of different issues for me. Um, and it works for so many different things. It works for the blooms. It works for a swipe, whether that's a bloom swipe or just a regular acrylic swipe, not using the bloom recipes. Um, so, so yeah, so you can see just how absolutely smooth that is, you know, there's just no texture to that. Um, so I kind of wanted to share some of the advantages of doing this recipe. So with that, I'll stop talking and we'll get into the, um, into the actual mixing. Um, so what I do is, um, I start with, I started with the basic recipe for like the Dutch pour. Um, and for my Dutch pour, I use uh, a ratio of, if I'm only mixing like a one, one time recipe, uh, 80 grams of flood, uh, 40 grams of paint and 30 grams of water. Usually when I mix this up, I mix a large batch. So I'll do that. So today I'm doing times four. So I've already put 320 grams of um, flood Floetrol in here. Uh, next we're gonna add 160 grams of paint. And for the paint base, I am using the Artist Loft Black. Um, but I also bought the Blick Acrylic in black. So when I run out of this, which I think I have probably two bottles. No, this is my last bottle of the black. I just opened it. Um, so when I run out of this, I'm gonna try the Blick and make sure you know that it kind of works with this as well. Cause I think they're, the cost comparison is, is fairly uh, similar. So for this, I need 160 grams and we're almost there. I feel like I need a new scale. Um, I use this when I measure out my food in the kitchen. So I'm constantly going back and forth and I don't know if I just need a new one, but it seems to like, like it'll read one thing and then you stop and then it'll change like it just did there. Um, so I don't know if I need maybe a more sensitive scale or maybe a less uh, sensitive scale. So that's uh, 160 grams of black uh, flow acrylic. And I also, just to mention, um, even though I started this with my, the Artist Loft Black, um, I did try it with the white as well. And I don't know if I posted, honestly, I can't remember the last month or two, it's kind of been a bit of a blur. I don't know if I posted that video where I compared uh, Color Place pillow paint with a new pillow paint that I've been using for a couple months now. And then I also threw in a white version of this recipe and it really performed surprisingly well. So, you know, you don't have to limit yourself to just black. Um, obviously you can mix this, mix this up with any color um, using, you know, these acrylic flow colors, um, just same as you would your Dutch, you know, you mix various colors to get, you know, a purple or a green or, you know, what have you. So that's mixed in pretty good. So that's, uh, the flood and the paint. So where I deviate from my um, my Dutch pour uh, recipe is that I don't add any water in at this time. But you can see this is this is really really thick, um, obviously too thick. And so from here, I'm going to go ahead and add the other ingredients, and we'll save the water to last. Um, just so we can make sure that we keep a good consistency. Uh, now the baseline for the water is 120 grams. And I will tell you that it's going to take less than half of that, I believe. Um, but we'll get started on the rest of the ingredients. So the next ingredient that I add for this recipe is a gel. Um, I happen to have the golden soft gloss gel just because I use this in another recipe. But I did buy some uh, Master's Touch, Hobby Lobby's brand, um, gloss gel, and I did try it. And I don't know if you've ever worked with it, but it's super chunky and really, really hard to, to mix, to get it to dissolve and mix. Where this is pretty much effort, effortless, and I feel like it, I think it works a lot better. Of course, it's more expensive. Um, but I do try to buy it when it's on sale. 
Um, and if I'm going to move forward with these types of recipes, I'm going to probably buy a larger container. So buy it in a bulk and save a little bit of money there. But, but yeah, so, I mean, use your own judgment. It didn't, the master's touch didn't not work. I just found it very, very difficult to get it mixed in with the rest of the ingredients. It seemed to make the paint very chunky and hard to dissolve in the paint. Um, so just keep that in mind um, as you're, you know, maybe planning this out if you want to try this recipe out. Um, and then, you know, if you're using a soft gloss gel or a medium, it doesn't necessarily have to be soft. It could be medium um, in the golden. I've used that as well. Um, either one will work just fine. Obviously the soft gloss was probably gonna mix in a lot easier than, um, than the medium. Okay, so I don't really have like, um, <laughs> this is gonna sound horrible. Uh, I haven't really worked out like a quantity. So for this, I usually just, um, like for the four times, I usually just plop in like three three blobs like that on my little uh, spoon here. So there's one. Now obviously if I was doing a smaller batch, I wouldn't put as much. I think the first time I made this, it was really small and I only put like like one and a half. But three, three, I'd say three to, or so of these will work just fine. Um, so we're gonna go with that. And it, it it's not really like an important component. I just feel like it makes the black a lot glossier and the appearance of the black um, much nicer uh, so it doesn't look as dull as what you tend to get um, when you you get the black house paints so I'm gonna mix that in and we'll see how easily that um, that dissolves and mix in mixes into this um, and if you've ever worked with the master's touch you know uh, it is very difficult and I've even tried it in a few other recipes I, I was watching somebody use it they were dissolving um, gloss gel and water to make a pouring medium for pigments, which I tried that. I didn't particularly care for it. Um, again, it was really, really even more difficult to dissolve with just water. Um, the Master's Touch brand, I mean, I think this soft gloss gel for gold would probably be a lot easier. Um, but just those are my, those are my uh, kind of my notes on comparing the two and I don't know what other brands there are out there that would be equivalent to the golden soft gloss gel uh, maybe there's some cheaper options um, this is just what I have on hand um, because I do use it for one of my cell activator recipes which I will be sharing that as well and some of them uh, some of the cell activator recipes um, I got from other artists and when I when I know who I got it from, because when I first started, I would take notes and not write down who I got it from. So honestly, some of them I just don't know, but I'm not gonna take credit for anything um, that's not mine. This recipe here is 100% mine. If somebody else had it, then you know I am unaware, but this is totally my recipe. So we've got that gel mixed in. And at this point, I'm gonna put the last recipe beside the water in. And this is another ingredient that I, I decided to put in um, for two reasons. In my head, I know when you do a cloud or pearl pour and you add in deco art satin and animals, the paint dries very smooth. Uh, I feel like it flows much better than like say an, a, an acrylic paint or um, a house paint. I feel like it dries very fast. It, like these recipes when you're using Decor Satin Enamels, I feel like, I mean, they just dry so fast. So for those reasons, I decided to put some of this into the recipe um, as I was, you know, figuring out what I wanted to put in it. Um, so again, I didn't in the, initially didn't measure it out, but the last time I made this up, I did uh, write down how much to put in. And I did three times and I put 30 grams. So this is a four time recipe. So I'm gonna try to put 40 grams in here. Actually, I don't think it was, I think it was 10. 10, let me think here while I'm measuring this out. I'll be able to gauge based on this. I think it was 
10. So I think I'm gonna put probably 20 in here, 20 or 30, and we'll see how that goes. Each time I make it, I kind of experiment and see like how it performs with that quantity in it. So we're gonna put 30 in here. And I know it's not a lot, but believe me, it does make a difference. All right, I put, this jar is almost empty. I feel like I just wanna put all of it in there, but there's still a little bit in there. I ended up putting like 32 or 33 in here, which is fine. We'll see how that performs. Okay, we'll leave those two. All right, so again, your last ingredient is going to be your water. And you're obviously going for a very, a thicker consistency, definitely thicker than a Dutch pour, for sure. Um, but it's going to be thinner than your typical, you know, um, pillow paint that you would use for a bloom. It's going to be much thinner than that unless you're you're one of those people that buy the house paint and thin it out tremendously with various things like flood and water gag. Um, but if you were just to go buy a can of house paint, um, it's fairly thick. Um, so this is this needs to be thinner. So at this point, I'm going to show you what the consistency is, so you can kind of gauge where we're at before we add water. It's pretty thick. Um, hopefully you can see this. I know black's kind of hard to see, but you can see it's super thick. Almost does, doesn't even flow off my stir. You see that? It's pretty thick. Okay, guys. So from here, I'm going to speed this up uh, and just give you a quick overview uh, and then let you listen to some music. Uh, because this process is somewhat long trying to get the right consistency by adding water a little bit at a time. And that is key, is only adding a little bit of water at a time, um, like f five grams, you know, six grams, something to that effect. Because I know I mentioned a couple of times, and I was wrong, I was not even looking at my notes, uh, I mentioned 120 grams was the baseline for the water. It was actually 160 since I'm doing a 4, 4x four uh, batch. Uh, so I think I end up adding just under 60 total. Um, and in my experience in mixing this, which has only been like three or four times, um, it's definitely less than 50% of what the baseline is for my Dutch pour base. Uh, so <clears throat> just keep that in mind. So I'm going to let you guys watch this. I'm going to just gradually add water to this until I get the right consistency. And I'll come back in at the end when I get to the right consistency. So um, you guys can uh, hear me talk again. All right. So enjoy the music.
So I think, I think we're good here. Yeah, that looks much better. Okay, one last time, I'll show you the consistency. Not quite as much of a mound. Okay, so just to review, and I'll put the recipe in the description box of the video. So just to review, um, started with my Dutch pour recipe, which, um, like I said, the baseline for it is 80 grams flood, 40 grams paint. And like I said, I've only tried using the Artist Loft Flow. That doesn't mean that you can't use um, any other color or brand. You just may have to adjust the recipe, especially the water content, I would think, um, to get the, the flow that you need. Um, and then 30 grams of water for that base recipe. And then again, adding in the Deco Art Satin Enamels and the Golden Soft Gloss Gel. Uh, again, you can use a different one. That's just the one I prefer, it's easiest to mix. So that's it. Um, and like I said in the beginning of the video, it's a pretty versatile recipe. You can use it for your blooms, whether you're doing you know, like a, a bloom flower, a bloom swipe, using your bloom colors, or whether you're using this um, for just regular uh, acrylic, like let's say a cup pour recipe, if you were doing, you know, just like a, a regular pour consistency with no um, house paint uh, pouring medium, uh, you know, just your acrylic and flood type recipes, um, whether you add Liquitex Basics or any other pouring medium is completely, you know, your, your selection, but it works good as a base um, for those types of pours as well. Um, I haven't used it in any cup pours. I've only used it in um, swipes and blooms. So feel free to um, do that. I, I probably will do that at some point. Um, I have a very large um, 24 inch wood round over there that I wanna make into a table. Um, so my plan is to do a cup pour and it'll probably be some type of recipe like this. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you are able to try this recipe out. I hope you enjoy it. I hope um, you like the results as much as I do. And please, please, please let me know if you tried it and you like it. Um, put a picture in the comments. Actually, I don't even know if that's possible. I don't think I've ever tried to put a photo in YouTube comments. Um, or email me a photo. I would love to see the results um, and love to hear about them in the comments. So please let me know what you think. Uh, give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye now.